All right, John, so uh, you brought some records. Now, this is from your personal collection. It's amazing. <laughs> um, quick story. I have a tribute to, to my uh, high school and college days uh, at my mom's house still. It's like she's never refurnished or redone the room. So, oh, wow. So okay, so you have your own there, bedroom. I have, like, posters up there That's from the crazy. 80s. crazy. You mentioned Xanadu. I have a... a, a <laughs> Uh, Olivia Newton-John Xanadu poster there. Wow. Yeah. College photos. It's like it's, it's, in high school photos. Is it dusty playing. when you go in there? A little bit. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. But uh, I had to, she was going to rent it out for the first time, and I had to like get rid of like all sorts of stuff, oh. uh, and it made me force me to look at my life in a way, oh, you know, wow. and, and go back and and uh, so I got all my albums out, and then I knew I was going to be on the show. Yeah. So I was like that 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 you know pushed me to do it real quick. So yeah, I just was. Uh, s- shocked and struck by how uh, cool and hip I was back then. <laughs> um, and also not. <laughs> right, <laughs> Because, right. Uh, like, Wild in the Streets, one of my all-time favorite movies about a rock star in the future who becomes president. And it's sort of, you know, it, it's a satire, but it has a great soundtrack. One song in particular, I should say, it's called The Shape of Things to, to Come, and uh, George Benson did an instrumental cover of it, and a band called, uh, oh, the Arrows. Oh, nice segue. Yeah. The Arrows, uh, they were like a surf guitar band. And they, the cover, the, uh, th- this is the soundtrack. Oh, it is fine. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the soundtrack. Uh, so they, they played some songs from here. They, they, yeah, they did the soundtrack. And it's not much better than the actual soundtrack, frankly. Uh-huh. Anyway, so the Arrows actually, uh, I found recently, did, they weren't even pleased with their own cover. That's so they fine. redid it in the 70s, and it's much more rocking and, and uh, <laughs> wild. Anyway, so that's fun. And then we got your Bauhaus, you know, to just oh, oh, wow. sort of like a little... That's um, great. Actually, yeah, Bauhaus... A little poly in the poly rock wheelhouse. We didn't th- I didn't think of Bauhaus, but absolutely. That. Yeah. So that's Bauhaus, and uh, yeah, that's very much an art band, almost, yeah. in a way, or for Absol- art geeks. Oh, Aztec Camera, you know, just oh, kind yeah, of fun, well. oblivious, yeah, yeah, yeah. love them. I got rid of a lot of stuff, so I really saved my favorite uh, stuff. What is this? Um, this, Silhouette Segments, you said you're into novelty albums. Well. Uh, I mean, this is not meant to be funny. <laughs> okay. Uh, like like uh, Dr. Demento stuff. But uh, this, in the late 60s, there was this hip pastor that decided to take um, music to watch girls by. He took that and... Uh, with his deep kind of voice. He has a little sarcastic, sarca- not sarcastic, but a little cheeky. He's oh, like, wow. Check this out. It's creepy weird. <laughs> but I guess, it, yeah. I, I guess kids back then, you know, they responded to some extent because he was there. He, here he is with somebody from the monkeys. Yeah, so he was popular. I think he had like a radio show or something. Sure. I found this at Music Mark and I'm like, oh my God, what is that? It's just that one tune that you're like, wow. You know. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. And then uh, because I'm a TV critic, one of my favorite shows, strangely, it's not very uh, cool, but The Big Valley. Okay. And anyway, the music was beautiful. And Lalo Schifrin wrote this one instrumental that I always thought was really beautiful. And so did, I guess, Hugo Montenegro, who was a big, uh, you know, he was like Herb Alpert or something. And uh, so covered one of the songs and put lyrics to it. It doesn't work because the, uh, the singers aren't that great until half, like halfway yeah. through. You're like, oh, God. That's too bad. But it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's still kind of cool that they even yeah. thought of doing that. So thank you, Hugo. Theme music, you know, Green Hornet, The Man from Uncle. But this is like, talk. this is a novelty. This is like, it's... Uh, bongo That's music cool, with like little art. chimpanzees screaming yeah, yeah. in the background to the, you know it's, it's almost like kids music this I don't, I don't what is this I, I never listened to it I just thought it was kind of interesting highly addictive it's like turn your hi-fi into a psychoacoustic device better than booze safer than pot it be, it, it's <laughs> probably just trippy atmosphere music but I love this kind of stuff it's disc nine in a series oh jeez side one Pacific Ocean side two Caribbean Lagoon that sounds fun all right, well, you're welcome to check that Useful out. Useful for a hypnosis, huh? I just love this album cover. It has nothing oh, to do with Oh, that's it, amazing. You know. It's Gustav Holtz's The Planets, and I'm not a big classical music fan, but not that, that I, I mean, I have my favorites, but. But that's know. a great suite, though. I mean, it's it is, really it's beautiful, yeah. influential for modern cinem- cinema yeah. music, really. Yeah. For uh, uh, John Williams, Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, look, at, and, look at this. 
It's just genius. I thought, I thought he was super hot, and she's pretty, and sort of Flash Gordon, you know. Yeah, but just look at that picture, though. Like, she's right. not very ladylike, but no, you gotta get that shot he's off. He's sweating right there, too. It's like, you yeah. know. What do we got here? Move, Move it. it. I have two of these, a different, uh, they're the follow-up The vast album. majority. I think I got, it's, this probably says music market on this. This looks like a European oh, press. version of something. Love for sale. Oh, this is a UK pressing. Oh yeah? Yeah. It's super fun. It's You can uh, just tell it's a different quality. There's one song called Muddy Sneakers. Is it like Get Soul? Yeah, totally. Soul funk? Yeah, totally. Oh, cool. It looks like fun. A little disco, you know. Well, the, yeah. A, a, a hint. I'm sure it's like the cool, cool style. Oh, we have another oh, one right there, actually. Oh, right. Oh, right. Yeah. Mind blowers, the vast majority. Isn't that fun? Wow, I wonder how they chose those models. <laughs> <laughs> I got this from a... You know, I would interview bands like for yeah. like, college newspaper and stuff in the in the early '80s. The only thing that made me really save it is that there's this version of uh, Downtown, the Petula Clark mm -hmm. you know, hit, but uh, it's really fun. It's like a big group singing it, and it, it, this it turns out it was a fundraiser for uh, AIDS research or, or or helping you know uh, patients. I think that somebody should just take that one song at least and and you know put it you know put it. Put it up on the web or something. It's really, yeah, you know, a nice version of that song, kind of special. Cool. What is this? Uh, these are two uh, Velvet Underground. I, oh, yeah, yeah. oh, right. Yeah, the Velvet and uh, oh, that's a is this an, this is an, an EP, right? Or, oh, I mean, a single. This just looks like a an eighty. Well, because you can tell the barcode on it. It's a it's a reissue. Yeah, but yeah, I love the, the the Velvet Underground. I mean, they're the antithesis of. Uh, Holly Rock, because <laughs> yeah. they're just so mellow. I mean, and obviously avant-garde. But White Light, that was about heroin, wasn't it? Sure. And to yeah. me, like that, that's got a freneticness to it. Like I could, right, I right. could see them. Yeah. You know, they're 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 they were born of similar origins, just twenty years different. Right, right. And they were very progressive or avant-garde to try different mm -hmm. things and this is a good album that, that I would always pull out at the end of like a party or something yeah. to just kind of mellow things down like kind of ease into like getting everybody out <laughs> sure I love that um, so and then uh, less than zero take that one uh, I really related to less than zero uh, the, the lead character uh, that's a film right yeah I really identified with the huh. novel and uh, it's got a real interesting cast. I mean, not cast, but Aerosmith, Roy Orbison, Poison, LL Cool J, Glenn Danzig, and the Power Fury Orchestra, Slayer, Bangles. And the Bangles cover Joan was Shed. made for the movie, and it was it was a hit. Of Hazy Shade. Oh yeah. The, the Black Flames. The, I don't know them. Public Enemy. That's crazy. It's and a great great soundtrack. Look at these that. sandals. Those are, oh god. Those are amazing. Well, what was funny is that I, I so related to the book <clears throat> that yeah. I was excited about the movie. And especially because the director was uh, this guy that did a, a, a pretty good gay romance called Another Country that had gotten some attention. So when he when news came that he was directing this movie, I thought that's going to be so cool. But it turned out it wasn't very good. It mm. looked good. So and I actually have the press kit to Lesson Zero framed in my living room because I think it's kind of kitschy now. It's oh funny. wow! Yeah, and then. Uh, Bowie. My, my favorite Bowie album. And it doesn't have like the songs that you're used to. This got Breaking Glass, right? Um, on it? Yeah. Sound and Vision, Breaking Glass. Right, right, right. Yeah. And then finally. That's their, that's their first album. This is my, yeah, this is my favorite band. Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark, early stuff. Not later stuff like Tesla Girls. That would, makes me mm. want to like, you know. And you, you got to interview them. Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah, good memory. Yeah, that was when uh, at AM Records at uh, the cool. offices, at, like when they had it with the Charlie Chaplin building. I'm pretty sure that's what it, when it was. Oh, in La Brea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, oh. Yeah, years ago. Yeah. I don't that's know why funny. they gave up that building. Well, the, it became the Muppet Workshop. Right. But yeah, I interviewed them and uh, it was such a dream. But yeah, I wasn't. You know, it's like uh, they were nice. Oh. You know, right? They were nice. They weren't your friend at the end. No, and it's okay. Yeah. You yeah. know, one of the things I learned early on was I don't really enjoy interviewing music people or writing about music. And mm -hmm. if they're a hero, you know, great. But but the questions about it's hard to write about the certain riff they did or, or, or it, it's just mm -hmm. not as inter it's more interesting to listen to music no. when it's a uh, an actor or performer i guess it's a little bit it's more interesting what they do for fun music people don't even want to answer those questions you know they don't want to talk about their favorite you know restaurant necessarily not that i care that much but 
it's just they're, they're harder interviews and harder to I write see. about. Yeah. So yeah. and that's so that's my little my little show and tell album collection. Well, thanks for bringing them by. Yeah, it's awesome. It's cool Did, to see a little window into someone's tastes. Mm-hmm.